Hi, if you're a business analyst who's working on a complex application, then this video is for you. In this video, we'll explore a UML diagram called the state transition diagram, which will be helpful for you to capture the various states in your application. But before we get started, click on the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so that you can receive many more videos from me. So let's dive in. So let's take a look at what the state transition diagram is all about. Let me share my screen. So the state transition diagram is a UML behavioral diagram that is used to depict the system behavior. It is commonly referred as state machines or state chart diagrams also. What are the uses of a state um, transition diagram? It is used to show a change in the state of an object. It, use, it is use, also used to model the dynamic behavior of a system. Now, you might uh, feel that this is a little confusing, but I will, I'm going to break it down into very simple components. Hmm? What exactly I mean by behavior of the system and what exactly I mean by this uh, states, various states in an application. So let's first take a look at the basic components of this diagram. So these are some of the basic components. The first component being the initial state, which is shown by a filled circle. This is drawn usually at the start of the diagram. The second component is transition, where you show an arrow, which depicts a change in the state. Okay. Just like how I have shown in the example, state one and state two are two different states, and the arrow is joining both of them. Then we have... The state, the actual state depicted in the form of a rounded rectangle, which you can see above. Both the states in the uh, rounded rectangle are the actual states of the object. Then we have a fork. A fork is a rectangular bar which splits two states. That means if you want to show that there is a parent state and the parent state results in two child states, then you can use this fork notation. Then there is also a notation to depict the join, uh, which is similarly a rectangular bar, where if you want to show that two different states are coming together and forming one particular state, then you can use this rectangular bar in the, uh, in the reverse fashion to show that. Now, I'll show it to you in a very simple example so that you can understand how a state diagram can be very easily drawn by a, even a non-technical person. Yeah. Take an example of a small uh, uh, audit management system. Uh, let's not increase the complexity of it. We'll keep it very simple. There are different states in this particular application. What I have tried to show in this diagram, let me just shift my video here. In this diagram, what I'm trying to show is the state diagram starts with a filled circle, if you see. That means the team first creates a new request in the system. That's what's coming in the arrow, a new request being created. A new request, when the team is working on the new request, it is in an in-progress state. That means work is in progress. So that is the state that I've shown in the first rectangle. When the team finishes uh, the work um, on that particular request, they forward it for review to the audit team lead. Okay, So from the in-progress state, it reaches the review in-progress state. Hmm? So please note, guys, if you are working in a workflow-based application, this is extremely useful for you. So for an in-progress, so a new request, let me start once again. A new request comes into the system and the team is working on the new request. They're gathering some documents, collating some documents, and uh, they're working on the request. After a couple of days of uh, collation of the documents, when they have completed it, they forward it for review to their team lead, which means the request now changes state as review in progress. Now, when the request is in re under review, it uh, stays in the review in progress state. Um, once the review is completed by the reviewer, 
it is either approved or rejected isn't it hmm? so that can be shown with the help of a rectangular bar which uh, shows that there are two outcomes uh, the review the result of the uh, review the outcome of the review might be approved it is the request is approved or it might be rejected so the left hand side shows approved if it is approved that is the end of the flow that means the approved requests are then uh, taken uh, for further consideration by the BU. And if it is rejected, what happens to it when it if it is rejected? If it's rejected, it goes back to the team for rework, which means it enters a state that rework in progress. Hmm? And when the rework is in progress, updates are made by the team. And uh, once the updates are complete, they resubmit it for review. That's, you, that's the reason you see the arrow joining back to review in progress once the updates are made. So this is a very simple diagram I have drawn, but uh, the same diagram uh, can be drawn for very, very complex applications like a loan processing application where the loan goes through different states till the time it is uh, sanctioned to the customer. Or it can be a client onboarding application where uh, the, the customer's information it's verified by various uh, teams in the bank. Uh, and then finally, an account number is allocated to the customer. So any complex application where a particular request or a particular uh, object moves from one state to the other, and that state has to be tracked, guys, you need to know where exactly the, uh, the request is in the, end, the entire cycle. Then the state transition diagram is extremely beneficial. So this diagram you can include in your FRDs, guys, or you can take, keep it as an individual diagram. But I usually prefer to uh, in, paste it in the FRD so it's a quick reference for my technical team so that they understand uh, at what particular um, section or what particular um, time the object changes the state. Because these statuses, remember, guys, these states have to be stored by your technical team in the back end. So that it can be shown uh, in the admin screens uh, what exactly uh, is the state of the request currently. Hmm? Uh, the state diagrams also extremely beneficial if you are um, dealing with an applicant tracking system huh? where uh, there are a whole bunch of jobs uploaded and there is a bunch of candidates and you map the candidates to the jobs and then you have to track uh, the progress of the same, right? which candidate got shortlisted and which is uh, waiting for approval, which has been, uh, which candidate has been onboarded. So extremely beneficial in those kind of systems. So that's all for now. I'll be back very soon with a new video. Keep learning, keep growing. Bye-bye.